All right, welcome everybody, good afternoon, and let's jump in here. Iron condors for monthly income in 2017. This is for educational purposes today. Um, the new iron condor class, which will start two weeks from this Wednesday, will go uh, approximately uh, two weeks on Wednesdays and Fridays. And uh, today's the free intro class. And then it, this just shows you the uh, each of the four classes, when they are, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Central. Uh, costs will be $197. Our, all classes are archived long after the class ends. So if you're working or you can't make a class, they're all archived. And what's great, you can watch them three, four times, whatever you want. A Q&A to Dan anytime. Doesn't mean I'll answer at three in the morning, but you can Q&A, it comes to me. So what's nice is even if you buy the class archived, you know, a month after the class, if you're not even there live, uh, as you're going through the material, uh, questions would come to me. And which is a remnant of every class we do, uh, live trades every class, just about. Well, every class with me and followed through to the end. So we try to make these classes as absolutely practical as possible. Um, if you're going to give instruction on the strategies and guidelines and everything, we need to have live trades to walk them through. It just helps the process. And so every class I do will be a live trade. And um, we'll go from there. Um, I think I'll put one on today. I just thought of that. I think I put a live trade on today. Uh, so we can talk through that process a little bit. So iron condor, I'm going to call this iron condor methodology for all seasons. A lot of people have different views, don't you? How many people have have view, have maybe a perception that iron condors are maybe only good for when volatility is high or maybe only good in a certain market or only good maybe in a range-bound market or only good, uh, you know, in a certain environment. How many of you maybe think that way? Well, uh, during the class, we're going to talk about an iron me condor methodology for all seasons, how you can trade an iron condor in any environment. And what we'll get at is, this is kind of what I'll be going over, a system based on looking at three key variables. The Greeks, you know, that your Greeks are your delta, gamma, vega, theta. Uh, the volatility levels. If you're trading SPX, looking at VIX, or um, if you're RV, uh, trading Russell, looking at RVX, and then price levels. So during the class, we'll be addressing how to trade an iron condor in all seasons, the flexibility of the system, and it's just you're looking at three key variables when you're setting up the trade. Very easy, uh, easy guidelines to follow. Uh, it's a flexible system for all seasons, and we'll have, again, the nice thing is you'll have your, uh, you'll have your no touch and touch alternatives. What that means is if you don't want to do any adjustments, just put it on, take it off for a profit or loss, that would be no touch. Um, if you're, you have a little more, uh, well, if, if you're, don't mind a little bit of adjusting, uh, we'll have touch alternatives. So we'll have different, you know, simple as you want it and as robust as you would like it. Uh, Trevor says, can you do even iron condors in a low volatility market? Absolutely. Low volatility, you know, again, we've been in a low volatility market most of the last two years, and iron condors have worked great, right? Low volatility uh, market. So, yes, I mean, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions out there that you need, that you can't do iron condors in a low volatility market. Um, um, they work very well in a low volatility market, but it's like anything else, understanding um, what you're doing. We may tweak them a little bit, and that's one of the things uh, we'll give you some guidelines in a low volatility environment, how we might set them up, and we'll define low volatility also. Uh, so you can trade iron condors in any price or volatility environment. 
uh, as I said, we'll give you simple guidelines, not 13 adjustments or you know all these sets of rules, just very solid. And they're really based on Dan's uh, that I that I've kind of come up with years ago, a four-step risk management system, which is how do you set up the trade? Number one, number two, um, your profit target and max loss. That's risk management. Number three, if you're going to adjust, when would you adjust? And then number four, how you adjust? So just very simple, structured guidelines. Um, and then I would give you specific guidelines on which strikes, what duration, uh, how to set up the Greeks. A vehicle focus for the class would be doing mainly SPX and RUD uh, would be the main ones. You can do them in liquid stocks. Some of your more liquid stocks, your Amazons and Googles, but I wouldn't do them around earnings. And we can give you an example or two of those. Um, a question says, is the 20% risk management the same on condors as on butterflies? Or is there more space to move with a condor? Isn't the risk the same? Justin, I'm not sure what you mean by is the 20% risk management. I'm not sure what that means, 20% risk management. Um, and then you said, is there more space to move with a condor? Isn't the risk the same? It's been 87 points. But you said, what was the expected move or what was the standard deviation for this period, which was uh, 90 days, right? And I just took last night's closing price, 24.46 times 0 0.09. And that's really kind of, you know, if you average the call and the put volatility of a 30-day option in SPX, you'd get about 0 0.90, oh, 0 0.09, I'm sorry, 0 0.09 as far as nine volatility in the SPX times the standard, to get the standard deviation if I took I want to narrow it to a three-month period, which would be 90 days. 90 divided by 365.25, you take the square root of that, and you're going to get 0.49. If you multiply those together, you get 107 points. So the actual move over the last three months was about 87 points up. The expected move, take what was the standard deviation, Standard deviation, one standard deviation would be 107 points. So we moved you know, 20 points less than the expected move. So in that situation, do you think that do you think overall the last three months or so should have been pretty good for income trading that we teach? What do you think? The actual move was 20 points less than the Expected move. What do you think? What do you guys think? Yes or no? Yeah, it should have been, you know, it was. That should have been. Um, good. And again, overall, most of even the last six months um, has been very good. So that's a little bit of perspective. And if you look at VIX, one year price chart, we're at 1130. You know, most of the activity over the last year, you've had some spikes uh, up, but the larger percentage of the time, uh, we've been below 14. So you've had a low volatility environment, a little bit of short spikes above that. So, you know, has that been very conducive to short Vegas strategies? Yeah, like an iron, absolutely. So most of the time, you know, these are very short spikes, over, but most of the time we've been in this 14 and under range of the last year. How did I get the vol number of 0 0.09? Nine is just the volatility. Uh, you know, if you look in SPX, if you're looking at an at the money call and put uh, of about a 30 day out option and you average them out, you're going to get about a nine volatility. So I'm just looking at about a 30 day option of which I would do an iron condor. Say, so what's the volatility? I don't take the VIX because the VIX isn't going to give me a number that represents maybe the duration that I'm trading. So that's how I get it. All right. So here's an example of a just one, 
one example of an iron condor. It doesn't mean during the class, it doesn't mean this is the ideal duration, but we'll talk a lot about that. Um, but here's an example in SPX, uh, when it was 2451.92 earlier. And again, an iron condor is simply selling an out of the money call and an out of the money put selling an out-of-the-money call, out-of-the-money put. This is your expiration graph, and this is your graph today. We'll call that a T plus zero graph. But this graph is more your expiration graph. So an iron condor is simply selling an out-of-the-money call and put. Uh, a short strangle, that's the foundation. And then you're just buying a long option 10 points more out of the money than your shorts just for a hedge. Uh, we'll look at an example in a second. An iron butterfly is selling an at the money call and put. And then you're buying some options further out of the money against it. So there's some similarities between an iron condor and an iron butterfly, but they're different. One is selling an iron condor is selling an out of the money call and put. In an iron butterfly, the foundation is selling an at the money call and put. So in this example, if I do 10 wide call credit spread and put credit spread, I'm bringing in a credit of $1.70, which gives me a margin of $830. And I got that by the width of the call credit spread or the put is 1,000, 10, 10 wide, $1,000, less the credit would give me a margin or 830, that's the capital that I would have to put up to do this trade. So if I was trying to make 10%, it's 10% of 830 or 8%, whatever I'm trying to make. So 10% of 830 would be $83. So we're looking to make a lot of times with our iron condors, maybe half the credit. The Greeks uh, with VIX at 1130, pretty low, SPX 2451 in this example, the deltas were about two, almost two delta short for one unit, for one iron condor. And that's pretty, that's pretty close to neutral. Um, you know, to me, when I look at neutrality of a trade like an iron condor, I can't just look at the deltas. I have to look at delta and the vega. And one, um, when you're a little bit short delta, uh, your price risk as defined by delta can offset some of the vega risk, uh, which means that as the market goes down, I'm short just a little bit of delta. That gives me a little bit of cushion on the downside, which can offset a little bit um, the short vega, which generally option volatility increases when the market goes down and decreases when it goes up. So having short delta, a little bit versus short vega, uh, especially on 30 to 60 day iron condors, not so much on 10 day iron condors is pretty normal. Uh, your theta in this example is 5.64. Again, this is a 30 day iron condor. So again, is it, you know, is, it, is trading a 30 day iron condor much different than trading a seven day iron condor? Sylvester Stallone would say, absolutely. They're like two, two, different, two different things. Roger Berry from the famous Berry family says, so you close early to retain 50% credit. No, all I said is that the yield that I'm looking for on the iron condor is about 50% of the credit. I didn't talk about closing early. Whoa, so closing early, if that means, yeah, I'm not holding it till expiration. Correct. How do you pick your expiration? Uh, a number of things. And, and, and in the iron condor class, I'm going to focus on one type of iron condor, which I think will work well over the next three to six months. But um, you pick your, exp you know, things that will go into how you pick your expiration. You know, you have to look at, again, if you go shorter expiration, let's say you're doing an iron condor. 10 days from expiration, you're going to get a lot more theta and you can make more money because you can, you know, if you have a 10 day iron condor, 
or a seven-day iron condor, you could get it off every week. So you can turn your inventory over four times in a week, excuse me, in a month. So you have a much better chance to make a higher yield than someone if they're doing a 50-day iron condor. You're not going to get the turnover, but you'll have maybe a little more cushion against price risk. If you have a 50-day iron condor, in a month are you going to get uh, four of these off? No. Oh, no, you're not going to get a 50-day iron condor off in seven days. So there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses in terms of picking an expiration. But during the two-week class, I'm going to focus just because people want a good, practical, something – easy that they can do every week. So I'm going to pick a particular expiration that I think is good right now, and, and all the guidelines are going to be based around that. Um, in a 30-day trade, I might be in the trade seven to seven to 10 days. Um, in this particular example, uh, again, this is just this example. Uh, I chose the short strike of the calls. Uh, by selling a call with a delta of 10, and I chose the short strike of the put by choosing a delta of 15. So this is a 30-day iron condor. My short calls are about somewhere around 60 points out of the money. My short puts are somewhere around, whatever that is, 96 points out of the money, right? Uh, with the current price of the underlying right here. So you can see you have, in this particular example, you have uh, more room on the downside at expiration than on the upside. So this would just be an example of a 30-day uh, iron condor. Uh, the cap is about an $800 trade, $830 trade uh, for an iron condor. Uh, with your theta of about five, and uh, you know that would be the an example of that type of a trade. Now let's contrast this a little bit. So how many of you do have done like iron butterflies or some type of butterfly? How many of you maybe do some iron butterflies? Butterfly trade is simply quite a few. Butterfly trade is simply instead of selling an out of the money call and put. You're selling an at-the-money call and put. So your foundation in an iron butterfly is selling an at-the-money call and put. So you're getting more, you're selling more time premium, but you're doing it at the money. You're selling more time premium, and you're selling it more at, at the money, so you're getting more theta generated, but you're not getting the protection of the iron condor selling a little further out of the money call and put. A question says, with a theta of five in the previous example, are you bringing in about $5 a day? Theoretically, yeah, $5 a day is what that means, but that number continually increases as time uh, moves on. So here's an example of a 30-day iron butterfly, 35 wide, which would be similar capital as we invested the iron condor. So trying to compare about an $800, $830 iron butterfly versus about an $800 iron condor. Can somebody tell me, does anything stand out here, especially as you look at the Greeks, that you might see a problem with this trade at the setup? Does anything stand out to you in terms of the Greeks that might be problematic here. Anybody see any problem? Okay, yes, it's, it's the delta. So when you do an at the money balanced butterfly, an SPX or RUT, you're going to be at times maybe a little bit uncomfortably short deltas at the, at the front end. You might say, hey, Dan, why? Why, if we do a balanced butterfly, balanced meaning we're selling our short calls basically at the money, pretty close to at the money, but why are we leaning maybe nine or ten delta short for every one contract when it's balanced? Balanced meaning 
My out-of-the-money call is 35 points up. My out-of-the-money put is 35 points down. If I'm doing it balanced, at expiration it's balanced, but why short-term does it look cockeyed? If this is the current price on the way down, it's the T plus zero graph, the graph at the beginning, not so or good on the downside, not so good on the upside. Why is that? Well, it's because the volatility skew in, in SPX or Russell, unlike most stocks to this degree, your out-of-the-money puts are higher volatility uh, than your out-of-the-money calls. Your out-of-the-money calls are lower. So this call spread that you're doing, call credit spread, that you're doing in the butterfly is going to get you much more short deltas and your put credit spread is going to get you a long delta. So um, even for the same amount of money as the iron condor, and starting out with more theta, to me, you're, you get two short deltas, so you got to kind of fix that at, at the beginning. So you got to fix that at the beginning. I'll get the questions in a minute. Um, so how can I tweak that? And most of the tweaks to tweak this are going to increase the capital versus the iron condor. It's going to increase the capital. So this is an iron butterfly, and the main difference between an iron butterfly and an iron condor, iron butterfly, again, you're selling the straddle, the at-the-money call and put, so you have pretty high expiration profit potential, but you don't get – uh, your expiration break-even points where your P&L crosses zero to expiration, you don't get as wide as an iron condor. So one isn't better than the other. Right? So the way to start reducing these short deltas is, so if I go from 30, in the previous example, 35 wide, to making the downside still 35 wide on the put side, but on the call side, narrowing it instead of buying the 2490 call, buying the 2485. So on the upside, my width is 30. The downside is still the same as the previous example. And that cuts my short deltas from 9 to 5. But my capital goes up a bit from the 800 range to almost $1,000, right? cut the deltas down to short five. Now, if you go to, say, how do I get the delta similar to the iron condor? Well, instead of being 35 wide, which got me nine delta short, or 35, 30 width, which got me five delta short, to get it similar deltas as the iron condor, I might have to go still, again, my put side is the same at 35 wide, but my upside would be 25 wide, and that would, you know, it changes the graph dramatically. And, and this is the type of iron butterfly that has worked very, very well over the last couple of years. Very little downside risk, delta's closer to zero. And so that would be a, we would call that in terminology a broken wing at the money uh, butterfly, an unbalanced broken wing at the money butterfly, iron butterfly. And so, but as, as you, as you change the width of one of the sides, your margin continues to go up some, and that's going to be one of the negatives. So when you're done narrowing the deltas, your theta is really not much bigger than your iron condor, right? So it's, it's all, Pluses and minuses, right? Uh, it's pluses and minuses as you do these things. So even though the theta of the original iron butterfly was maybe double, a little more than double the theta of the iron condor, by the time you get the deltas a little bit more under control, the theta is not much bigger, right? So it's, it's pluses and minuses. On this a question said, isn't the Vega of concern too with VIX being at 11? Oh, your your Vega's all your Vega's. I'm always concerned and looking at the Vega, but yes, with VIX at 11, you're concerned with the Vega, and that's why it's important. How do you set up the trade when 
you know, SPX is like today 30 points or whatever away from the all-time highs and VIX is at 11. And so that's important. How do you set it up? Again, can you trade an iron condor when the VIX is low, which you'll find when price levels are have been rallying uh, or, or in the upper end of the range? Yeah, can you trade an iron condor when VIX is high and the market's down been down a bit. Yeah, and it's just how to do it, right? And uh, we'll have some good, clear, simple guidelines for the class. How much credit was the iron condor example bringing in? Uh, the iron condor example was bringing in uh, $1.70 credit. $1.70 credit. So you, you really can't compare just because this is bringing in $23. You know, it's a different trade, right? You know, it's bringing in $23, and uh, uh, the risk is about $11.50. Your risk is the difference between – is the, your, your, your risk is $35, which is your risk on the downside. So the capital you'd have to put on this trade is the, the width of the downside uh, less your credit. But again, as in any trade, it's how you trade it, right? But um, that's one of the things the conventional iron butterflies at the money uh, are going to have you a little bit too short deltas. That's why people do broken wing butterflies, which has been popular over the last three years or so. So anyways, that's all I want to do today, just talk a little bit about iron condors, a little bit about contrasting iron butterflies and iron condors. And again, starting two weeks from today, we're going to give you a good, simple methodology of, tr of trading an iron condor and how you can feel comfortable trading it in various environments, some simple guidelines. And as I said, we'll put on live trades for each class to show you how we would do it. Nil said, is the short selection strike for the iron condor based on delta or width from underlying. So um, generally how I will pick short strikes for an iron condor will be on the delta of the short strike. But again, do I pick the same strikes for the delta in a low volatility versus a high volatility environment? No, I may tweak them a little bit. I would tweak them a little bit. Dan says, isn't the risk 1170? What did I put 1150? Uh, it could be. I'm just taking the, it should be the, your risk on the downside, which is going to be your most risk, right? The width of the put spread minus the difference of the credit spread. So if I did the numbers wrong, if that's what it should be, 1170, then, yeah, then it should be 1170. Apologize for that. All right. So again, I, you know, if there's any other questions, I'll hang around here for a minute or two or whatever. Um, if you have any questions on the class, let me know. We'll be starting. It'll be a two-week class starting uh, in two weeks from today. It'll be extremely practical. We'll trade through these things, give very set, easy, specific guidelines, how to trade these, how to adjust them, manage them, how to set them up. And I'll give you some very easy guidelines that in a low volatility environment, you make this tweak. And I'll define that. In a little bit higher volatility environment, I'll just give you, uh, you know, when VIX or RVX or these levels, I would do this. So, yeah, just make it easy for you so you can feel comfortable trading this in different environments. Uh, Drew, you'll be able to, yeah, I can show you the slide. Again, you'll get copies of these. And you can see the iron condor uh, slides on that. Another question regarding how do you exit the butterfly? Yeah, exit it just is an iron butterfly. You just uh, get it. again if you're selling, if you're doing an iron butterfly, you're doing it for a credit. If you're doing an all call or all put butterfly, you're usually doing it for a debit. But if you do it for a credit, you'd like to exit by getting a lower credit, right? If I sell it at, in this example, 2330, I'd like to buy it back at a smaller number uh, than that. Uh, 
Herb says, will both weekly and longer term iron condors be covered? Um, no, I'm just going to cover one. I, I, I'm thinking what I'm going to lean is a mix, right, that I've uh, come up with an iron condor. It's not too far out, but not too close. So, no, I'm not going to be doing uh, – general. I just got done with a how to manage a 4,000 – how to – how to make a plan to make 4000 a month on a $20,000 portfolio, and that really focused on short-term trades. And so uh, I won't be making the focus of the short-term trades. I'm going to pick what I think is a, a, a good blend of the long-term and short-term, and that's what I'm going to be uh, focusing on kind of in the middle. Uh, do I have guidelines or a plan for when SPX price gaps on the open? and your loss becomes great. Yeah, and we'll talk about that as far as uh, gaps and, and what have been some practical, what have been the gaps over the last five to 10 years. Uh, Howard says, will you be doing the 4K and 20K program again? I'm sure sometime, yeah, I'm, I'm actually running, uh, there was a lot of interest, we're running a part two on that, which will be starting up in another week for those who went through part one kind of a continuation on that, but I'm sure sometime in the next three to four months, I think that's really a, you know, there's a lot of people interested in, you know, not everybody has a hundred or $200,000 or 50. And so uh, to trade a 20K portfolio and to have a good opportunity as you become better at the craft to make a decent uh, buck on that, uh, though it takes a lot of work, um, I think that'll continue to have uh, people like something like that. So, all right, folks, well, thank you for coming. If there's any other questions, you can send me an email. Look forward to seeing you. It should be a great class uh, starting in two weeks. And uh, we'll see you later. Uh, Ed says, where are the replays? I don't seem to be getting any of them through my email. Ed, if you're not getting anything, I'm not sure what the uh, – you know, if it's spam or whatever, you know what I would do, Ed? Just send John at SheridanMentoring.com and tell him. Uh, he, I'm sure he'd be able to help you. John at SheridanMentoring.com. All right. And, again, that will be starting two weeks from today. And you know what? Um, the way you sign up for class, uh, uh, we'll be sending out an email today with the link so you can sign up. Also, maybe in a couple days, there'll be a link on our website, but we'll be sending out an email to you guys today for those who signed up for this free class today. There'll be some information on where you can sign up. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you later.